It's the next level. Okay, y'all, let's review what we've learned. What happens when a Nexus event branches past Redline? Very bad things. Come on, Loki, what is it? <sighs> it's when the TVA can no longer reset a Nexus event. Okay? Boring. Right, and that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of reality as we know it. Can you hear me? Are you recording or are you alive? Uh, sort of both. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the second and third episodes of Marvel's Loki. So, Steve, do you want to take it away for the first episode? And Sure, sure, absolutely. So, episode two was titled Variant. It was a couple weeks ago. The synopsis we have for it is Mobius puts Loki to work, but not everyone at TVA is thrilled about the god of mischief's presence. <laughs> They are not. <laughs> but my initial thoughts, I, I just love the episode, just the way that Loki was playing off to the TVA at, and Mobius. Uh, I really think there's like pretty a pretty cool dynamic about them. And I kind of mentioned it the last episode uh, when we covered and we last podcasted. The two shows I was referring to was uh, I Spy with Robert Culp and Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. And that just gave me, and then there was the man from Uncle too, as well as uh, uh, there was another one that uh, had Henry Cavill and Army Hammer in it that they made a movie of recently too. But it, it had that weird opposite dynamic of two characters, which I really loved and enjoyed. It was just it, gave was me it all Owen those Wilson moments. in the reboot the the movie I Spy? Was it Owen Wilson? I th I think so. I think you're right. And funny that you bring that up because I gotta I gotta look it up now and see what. <laughs> well, it just gave me all the vibes, you know, two people having to work to, with one another that are complete opposite, but work well together, you know, yeah, Mobius. Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson. Yep. 2002. Yeah. Wow. Mobius literally breaks down Loki to Loki during their walk. And that was <laughs> one of my favorite conversations within the episode. Plus the comedic format within Tom Hiddleston throughout the episode, actually throughout the series, because even episodes two and three, he's very, very good as a comedic actor, I think. And plus, you know, I, I just love to see how he portrays trying to help the TVA, but also shows care and concern within the mission and getting to the third time lizards or timekeepers of the mm -hmm. TVA. I really don't think that Loki we ha that we have with Mobius wants to be malicious in any way. I think after his awakening from the first episode of seeing what happened to him, what happened to all his loved ones, I, I think he kind of changed. And I think redemption is what he really wants as well as uh, accolades. But of course, you know, you got to feed his ego. Mm -hmm. And I, I just loved seeing the, the lady version of Loki within the episode. That, that, was, that was really quick. I thought that was going to come later on within the series. Yeah, we talked about that before last week after we had both watched the, the episode that it was kind of interesting that they broke that reveal so early in the series. I mean, it is only six episodes, but still, you know, showing us that in this very second episode was intriguing. And I, I loved it as well. Uh, I, all the things you just said were definitely the way I felt about it. I love that, you know, we got some really big reveals, like you just said about the Lady Loki, but we also got some more questions. And as we get into these next two episodes, episodes two and three together, there's going to be some other things, some more things that we're going to reveal and some things that are going to make my head explode. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of stuff is going to make our heads explode. Yeah. Because we're going to see more variants of Loki, I think, within this show. Yeah. And I, I just can't wait to see what we get, though. Well, I They really didn't tease too much when we got the trailers. Yeah, we didn't know too much about what was what was going to be about, really. We mm -hmm. knew we had to know it was going to have something to do with time because we knew that's what he was he was messing with. But we had no I mean, I had no idea that this was going to be the direction it was going to go. Well, yeah, it's. We're basically, it's setting up the multiverse of madness and the multiverse in general for Marvel at this point. So they have to have something kind of give us a story or a backstory for people who are not Marvel comic fans, but are fans of the movies and the shows. Mm -hmm. 
So they have to give that little information in there to guide them and what, you know, what they're watching when yeah. all these new movies come out. Because, you know, a- after this show ends, because I'm, uh, what was it, six episodes they were slated for? Yes, six episodes. And they just, according to TV Podcast Industries, they just finished editing episodes five and six. So the, the woman who was doing it returned back to the UK. So they've still been working on it, you know, even now as these first episodes are are being shown. So Yeah, they were put on a rush because of COVID and all the restrictions. And they they are getting it all in because they, they really want to get these movies out. And I really am glad that they're they're making a push for this it's putting you know it's giving the actors work come on yep Yep. (laughs) exactly all right so with that we should move into our top fives Marcia, don't bother me until you read all the files. I have. Every file. Yes. Pertaining to the variant. The answer isn't in the files it's on the timeline. He's hiding in apocalypses. Which apocalypse? Sure, I'll go first, and it's it's going to ramble a little bit because I'm still confused, and it makes my head hurt. But <laughs> at first, I thought that that there was only one timeline that existed that's the sacred timeline. But as we've seen with multiple Lokis out there, we know that there are there is already a multiverse that's been created. Mm-hmm. I thought they were trying to stop these new timelines from being created. But no, it turns out that, and what we find out more in the third episode is that this whole pruning thing is where they destroy just the epicenter sort of of these Nexus events. Mm-hmm. And then, or they don't get, let them get to a Nexus event or, or something like that. And, and all it is, is to, I don't know. And I'm still unclear about what the sacred timeline is because was Loki on the sacred timeline or, and he stepped off from it. So what's the state of the sacred timeline now? If he's, and it, it just, it, it could spin me around and make my head hurt. Yeah, and so I'm does. going to try to stop. Uh, thinking about it and trying to figure it out. That's and my you've number gone five. cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's my number five. I'm going to stop trying to figure it out. Well, the the way what I keep in my mind is is that the sacred timeline is the timeline that we know of Marvel now, of uh, what we've been seeing over these past over ten years now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to look at it as. That's the sacred timeline. Whereas all the others are different versions of that particular timeline. And there are different identities within certain characters. Like, you know, we could have multiple versions of Hulk or multiple versions of Captain America. Somebody could be female Mm -hmm. rather than male. And they've proven that over and over again within the comics. But a lot of the people, like I stated before, are not really Marvel comic book fans. They're not out there reading or, you know, have been reading for years. Come Think about it. Marvel's been around since, like, what, late 40s? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so you have so much to work with. And nobody's going to go out there and buy everything to read up to educate themselves with. So it's different than having a movie that was converted from a book because these comics are decades and decades of of material. So they're just picking and taking what they can to entertain us to adapt to it. And I I just enjoy that aspect. Mm -hmm. And I kind of veered off left lane. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. That's what we're here for. What's your number five? My number five, that would be the intro scene. And I thought that was amazing. I loved it. It was so cool to see... Other TVA members in the field, but with this, it sets up the episode completely. We lose B-20 due to the other Loki variant that they are tracking, but they they play Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler (laughs) (laughs) during that scene. I love it. It's a great song, too. And it was meant because it was meant for that particular decade. You know, that song has a lot within the lyrics about what is going on within Loki, and I think it sets us up for this particular Loki that we are watching work with the TVA. So the lyrics state, where all have the good men gone, where are the gods, and where are the street-wide Hercules to fight the rising odds? Is there white knight on a fiery steed late at night I toss and turn? I need a hero. So is the TVA what they are all cracked up to be? You know, it makes me question that. Uh, Since Loki points out that to Mobius, 
within the episode during their conversation about the TVA as well in a later scene. Plus, like, I like the reference to uh, Avengers Endgame when Quill brings up Footloose being a great movie, but Peter Parker <laughs> states that it never was. <laughs> The Bonnie Tyler song, like I stated before, we hear in this episode was written for Footloose back in 1985. So that was a cool Easter egg in reference to that. And well, as which, which with when the, the time frame of the Renaissance Fair that the incident happened as well, because, you know, I'm so glad my Ren Fair opened up <laughs> going mm-hmm. out in August. So it gave me that. I was like, oh, I love this. But yeah. I just love that. I love how they, the, the girl makes the mention. It's like, you're not in costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, they didn't state, hey, it's Time Traveler's weekend. <laughs> you're number four? My number four is just that the whole thing of Loki becoming a member of the TVA, and I know we get a little bit more of that uh, in the next episode we'll talk about when we get to episode three. It, it was just hilarious seeing him in that that little skinny tie dressing like Agent Mobius yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that that <laughs> back of the jacket that said variant on it. And, uh, you know, and how he tries to play them in, in the tent and Mobius figures it out. And he's just like, oh, you, you like to lie that whole wolf in ears talk. And he compares the, the TVA to the Asgardians. And but I just love how, how Mobius figures it out and shuts him down and says something like, you know, I have ears, too. Mm. And then throughout the rest of the episode, we get to see what Mobius really does. And that's that he's an analyst. He analyzes these events Mm -hmm. and then sends teams out or he sometimes goes with the teams to take care of them. And we get to see Loki dig into that uh, that analysis of all those different natural disasters. And just again, Tom Hiddleston has, has got a way of of face acting. That yes. is is just amazing when he reads about the destruction of Asgard and he puts it all together and then that whole salad scene story with the with the salt shaker and and destroying Mobius's lunch was just hilarious. I thought it was great. Did he drop milk in there? I, I he it was it was soda or it was something out of a can. Yeah, oh. he, he poured something out of because he grabbed that other guy's the the guy that we liked from the first episode his drink and and poured some of that in there. It was just like. All this stuff that he's putting in there to ruin Mobius' salad. That just reminded – that that little scene of him doing that reminded me of a scene in a movie, but I just can't make it out. I can't remember. So mm. if you listeners are out there and you have an idea of what my thoughts are, that somebody was describing something and then they destroy somebody else's food, it, it has to be there out there. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I enjoyed that too. It, it's so funny too because it was like Loki was given a task and he was able to do it. Mm-hmm. And but he was onto something and Mobius saw it, and I thought that was pretty cool. It, it's kind of that interaction with with each other that I love. Yeah. So my number four that would be Mobius's interaction or one on one with Boss Rovain Renslayer, mm-hmm. and he calls her Slayer. Yeah, yeah, I didn't catch that the, the first time. That it, I thought you were just confusing her name up with what he was calling her, but I, I, I think he did kind of drop the Rin one time and just call her Slayer, and I'm not sure what the meaning of that was. Yeah, me neither. And, and I felt kind of like there was a relationship, not just the, uh, you know, boss and mm-hmm. employee. It might have, like, like, she was involved with him mm-hmm. at some point. But there is a reference to the comics, like I had mentioned before, that in the comics that there were multiple versions of Mobius. Mobius mentions that the rings from his drink were from her other favorite agents. And then uh, I have in here, because these notes are old, they're over a week, <laughs> but I already saw episode three, so we have an idea of what's going on, but we won't right. get into that until we cover episode three. So that was all for your number four? Yeah. So my number three is, is pretty quick. It just, it just, I thought it was interesting, the whole thing with jet skis and the way Owen Wilson, the, again, these guys are acting the crap out of this thing. They're so good. Oh, yeah. Just, he delivers this whole monologue about jet skis, about how beautiful they are and how there was a moment in the 90s when when form and function came together in an art. And I, and then they get into the whole idea of existence and, and chaos mm. and, and what belief is and... and and Loki tries to like shut him down with, well, you just believe that. And he's just like, well, it gives me a purpose, you know? And I, again, there's, there's things that we found out in the next episode that kind of make us understand better what's going on in Mobius's head, you know, because he's just consumed by the TVA. And, and like you said, we already know, we now know why that is, but I just, again, Owen Wilson is just masterful in that, 
the delivery of that. I, I really pay attention sometimes to how actors deliver lines. And I just love it when they deliver lines that seem ludicrous, you would think to say in everyday yeah. life, but they, they, they say it wonderfully. Yeah, well, it's kind of like ER when I used to say all those lines of dialogue about like these medical things. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had a hard time and they were tongue tied. Just think about this world that's not a real world that's been created. That's all very strange. And they have to rattle it off. Yeah. Yeah. I, I give the actors credit for that. You know, they, they do a lot of homework and they have a lot to remember too. I think Katie Sackhoff said because she had a cockpit scene in Battlestar Galactica that she still remembers to this day. Same thing with Mark Hamill for Star Wars, mm -hmm. <laughs> where it was like, what is this talk? <laughs> So that was your number three. So yes. my number three, uh, I love the detective Loki within the episode, how he figures out the vet, that the variant that they are hunting are, they're at a uh, pre-cataclysmic locations within time. So Loki uses that time to hide every, that Loki, you know, uses that time to hide every time, but they both are able to figure out what timeline that the Loki they are tracking is in 2050 where the kablooey candy was made within that time to track it. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm hoping that they market that kablooey candy. I wonder <laughs> what it would be. The, it would be Pop Rocks infused with, like, chocolate or something. Who knows? Something. So that brings us to my number two. Yes. I just love the search through the store as they're they're going through. And, and we didn't get to see a lot of the other teams looking for Loki, but it, it reminded me of those 80s movies where you have the good guy trying to find the bad guy in yep. some location or they're hunting each other down. Uh, all those kind of things. It, it really was, was really, really cool. And, uh, you know, the very first person that they meet in the store is this guy who's buying azaleas at it's a hurricane sale, 50% off, you yeah, know, because there's a hurricane outside. <laughs> Cause that's what you do in a hurricane. You go hunt, you go buy azaleas. Oh, yeah. um, but you know, but then they find out that he's possessed by the other Loki and then B-15 gets possessed. And again, I, I got to give credit to TV podcast industries because they really made me realize how good this actress is because she mimicked how some of Loki's mannerisms that we've seen from our Loki that are in the the variant Loki mm -hmm. as well. You know, then again, that 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 poor guy in who's talking to the the Minutemen who's asking them for rescue, and the Minutemen are just treating him like a jerk because he's going to die, and and yeah. Mobius is like. It, just because they're going to die doesn't mean you didn't, don't need to treat them decently. Yeah. You know, a lot of then, empathy from Mobius too. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. And then they find, they find C20 and she's there on the floor and she's been traumatized by something that we don't find out until the next episode, what she's been traumatized by. But I, I, I just love how the lady Loki was, was switching bodies until she found one basically that was physically able to, you know, kind of match with uh, our Loki yep. and uh, and beat him up. And that whole fight scene was was just was great between him and that construction worker looking looking guy where he, they're throwing each other around. And it's like it's like Loki takes a couple of hits and then realizes, wait, I don't need to I can I don't need to just let this guy wail on me. I can actually fight back, you know, <laughs> and, and so the, it was just a good fight. Oh, it definitely was definitely a good fight. And. The one thing to add to that, it, it shows the difference between the two different Lokis, because I don't think we've ever seen our Loki, as I like to call him, mm -hmm. like, possess somebody. No, I was confused when I watched this episode the first time, thinking that he had the stick again. Because remember in Avengers, when he would touch people with the, the Loki pokey stick, as, as Kevin Smith yes. called it, and he would make them... them that was turn. enchanting. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's, but he had the stick to do that. And I didn't realize until I watched it, watched this episode multiple times that the other Loki was just doing it by touch. Well, that, that's enchantment, but never possession. Like the Loki that he's tracking and right. wanting I just to meet up. It's a similar, it's yeah, a similar, yeah. it's a similar magic. Correct. And I, I, I was confused at first by thinking that, that, that our Loki did have this power, but no, he actually didn't. It was the stick that the, the, yeah. the mind stone in the stick that had the it, was doing. Yeah, I don't know why I kept saying stick. <laughs> it, it, it is a stick. <laughs> it's just you know people call it scepter. <laughs> but all right, my number two that would be the interaction with Loki and female Loki within the scene. Mm -hmm. So many body changes within the scene as well, which I enjoyed, which is pretty cool because we don't get to see her until the very end. 
Mm-hmm. The other variant is constantly trying to manipulate the Loki that we are following within the TVA. She's trying to utilize him to her own needs. And I think we get to see that throughout the series. <laughs> and that's it. My number one is just, again, it's the female Loki herself. Just, just I, I love the similarities, but also the differences that you can see uh, the actress, uh, the, the actor, the female actor really did a good job mm-hmm. of mimicking, but not totally, not completely 100% mimicking the Tom Hiddleston characterization right. of it because yeah. it's a different kind of thing. And we already talked about the fact that they revealed it very early in the season, but then, you know, it is only six episodes. So I, I kind of, I'm glad that they got to it quicker rather than later. They didn't make us wait until episode four or five to see the, who the variant was, but it also means there's a lot of story left that, that we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And she did have the horns on the helmet, but we'll talk about that in the next episode as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, I kind of saw that right away. And I knew it was a kind of a offshoot of what he had because he had a helmet with big, huge horns. Mm -hmm. With her, it was small. Right. Which was pretty cool. My number one would be the Lady Loki. You know, the way that variant leads our Loki within the time slip. Mm -hmm. I just love that, how at the very end, he just goes with her. Our Loki follows her, and I love that. And we don't really know what he is up to, honestly, because he is the god of mischief. We don't know. It just intrigues me. The questions I have or had, will he follow and help or will he help Mobius with his mission so that he could get back and talk to the timekeepers? Yeah. But there is one other thing that the Lady Loki seems to be setting all these time resets at certain events to make more breaks within the timeline. And it it sounds to me like, you know, like I'm looking at this at at an episode two Mm -hmm. thought at this point. How will that fracture the timeline, you know? Yeah, because we didn't know at that time what the what the plan was. Correct, yeah. But we'll move on and we'll, we'll once we get into episode three, we'll go through all that stuff. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, I've just got a couple of notes I think that we didn't already talk about. Sure. The, the woman at the beginning, you talked about the Renaissance Fair and the woman at the beginning, I just loved that when she, when they kind of glared at her, she said, some of us need this. Yes, that was, we do. <laughs> you know, That's the whole point of a run fair is to get exactly. away. Exactly. We already talked about the holding out for hero Bonnie Tyler. Mm-hmm. Loki wants to overthrow or take over the TVA. Mm-hmm. Variant says she doesn't want to take over the TVA, but she, maybe she wants to destroy it. We just don't know. And we get a little bit more of her plan in the next episode, but I think she's not even revealing everything in the next episode. Hmm. Yeah, we get her a lot within the next episode. Yeah. You've got quite a few notes, so why don't you go through yours? All right. Well, Tara Strong is Miss Minutes. I love that they created the character inter- to interact with Loki and everybody else within it. I think uh, TV podcast industries even mentioned it too. Uh, Mr. DNA. Mm -hmm. It's their version of Mr. DNA. But in this case, it's more interactive. And I just look forward to more of her within the show. I'm hoping to see that character again. One of the variants in the hologram description is of him winning the Tour de France. We all know Loki is a cheater and a mischief. But I just love the comparison to the real world events because some of the people were caught doping to make it within the race, like Lance Armstrong, who admitted to doping while he was in the Tour de France, plus the Hulk out version mm-hmm. of Loki with the horns. Yeah, I just, I, I want to see that one. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> next one up would be the moment that Mobius states how the Nexus destabilizes the timeline, and that's why they have to reset and do it in real time. They have to hit it before it redlines, before it destroys everything. And the last one, well, that's uh, the reference to Krakoa being destroyed in 2051. So Krakoa within the Marvel comics is the living island that is that they declared to be a mutant, but doesn't know what it is doing when it tries to kill anyone that comes on it. So the new version of the X-Men within the first giant-sized X-Men comic introduces the characters of Colossus, Nightcrawler, Storm, Sunfire, Thunderbird, Banshee, and Wolverine. The team before was killed or hurt so bad that Professor X had to cover it up and brought in the new team to conquer the living island that was considered a mutant. Hmm. So that's a 
cool Easter egg that they threw in there and a mutant reference within this show. There are other places that were destroyed within that mm-hmm. they see on that computer that I was not going to go through because <laughs> they were real events and some of them were Marvel events, but that one struck out at me. As soon as I saw Krakow, I had to actually stop it and pause it and look and like they spoke about something I love. I love that whole point, but I can't wait because mutants are on the rise. They're going to be involved within the MCU soon, I hope. So we should move on to quotes. I don't have any, but you have one. I've only got one, and it was it was during that talk in the hallway you you talked about already with between Mobius and Loki, where he says yeah. you've literally stabbed people in the back like fifty times. So I just thought that was funny. It's very true, though. Yep. All right. So that was our uh, our thoughts and coverage of Loki season one, episode two. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying to enchant me. It won't work. Why? Because you're a magician? No, because my mind is too strong. Fine. (laughs) Now we're moving on to Loki Season 1, Episode 3, entitled Lamentus. And the synopsis for this particular podcast, or this episode, I should say, (laughs) because this is still the same podcast. Loki finds out the variant's plans, but he has his own that will forever alter both their destinies. Bum, bum. <laughs> yeah. So initial thoughts, what were yours? I loved it, but I hated the cliffhanger. And, <laughs> I, you know, I'm usually okay with cliffhangers, especially in a week to week show. But <sighs> this time there was something that bugged me and I'll get into it when I get into my discussion points, what, what it was that bugged me about this particular cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. But I am really excited for the next episode. I can't wait to see how they get out of this. Same here. Well, we got the cliffhanger, too, on episode two, if you think about it, because he just jumps in. We don't see Mm -hmm. anything. So I think every episode after this might have a cliffhanger. So keep that in mind. We're not going to know where we're going. But regardless, this is the third episode. We only have three more after this. Yeah. The sixth one is going to be an interesting one. So we might have to pull in somebody for that particular episode when we cover it. I'm thinking our friend Greg, because Greg's been having fun watching the show so but my thoughts regardless of no mobius i i enjoyed it i have to admit admit it you know uh, though at that it was more humorous with two loki's or sylvie as she calls herself now she yeah. no, she no longer calls herself loki and you know that those are my thoughts on that you know it it's just quick short and to the point <laughs> <laughs> So with that, we're going to drop right into our top fives of season one, episode three of Loki. You're drunk. No, I'm just full. But bear in mind, I'm very full. Now, I need you to try this. It pairs very nicely with the figgy port. Who's got the figgy port? My number five would be both Lokis have different powers. I really like that aspect. Sylvie, who is our female Loki, is definitely different, but the same as the Loki we are have been following within throughout this whole MCU. Obviously, this is the original version before mm-hmm. the uh, first Avengers movie. But Sylvie can't enchant Loki, and I found that interesting. I'm wondering if it has to be for the fact that he's another Loki. Well, you know, it, it wasn't that she can't enchant him. He didn't. He wouldn't let her even try. Remember, the only time she tried was in yes. was in the TVA where she couldn't use her magic, and after that, he wouldn't let her touch him. So, you know, maybe she can, maybe she can't, and it's, well, it's going to be interesting. There was that one scene when they were what hiding out on Lamentis, and she tried to to enchant him, and he goes, "You're trying to enchant me. You can't. Oh, my okay. my." My brain is too strong. Right, I'm too right. strong for this. So I'm thinking, no, she can't. Her magics won't work on him because they're pretty much the same. So those are my thoughts on that. Yeah. I, I really, I'm really hoping that's the case because I have more thoughts about these two. <laughs> Um, so my my top one is just the fact there was no Mobius in this episode. I didn't even realize that because I literally, when I watched episode three the first time, I had just watched episode two for the second time and put my notes in. 
So I went right into episode three. I didn't even realize that Mobius wasn't in it until I was listening to friends at TV Podcast Industries talk about the episode and mentioned that Mobius wasn't in it, or somebody mentioned Mobius wasn't in it. And I was like, oh yeah, we didn't see him at all in this in this episode. And so I felt kind of bad that um, I didn't realize he wasn't there. But that just shows you how good the interaction between these two Lokis was, was that I didn't even notice that we didn't have the interaction between Mobius. And- yes. Plus, you know, we didn't have any TVA, really, mm-hmm. if you think right. about it. None of them were there. So they couldn't really track and get to them in time. So this was just a bottled episode between both Lokis, you know, Loki and Sylvie at this point. So it was a way for us to learn and get to know her. And I really think this was put in, into place as a plan within the writing so that we have, like, we care for this mm-hmm. character because we got a lot of information about her, which I really did enjoy because they're both very different, but very much the same and similar at the same time. Well, that would be my, we're on our number, my number four. So that would be the train car scene. I thought it was great. I loved it. I love the interaction between both, both of them, Loki. And I'm just going to say Sylvie yeah, for now. Yeah, let's just use Sylvie. The fact that one cannot ride a train when they're sitting backwards, that's our Loki. And then the other, Sylvie can't <laughs> sit back to a door. <laughs> yeah, but there's doors on both sides. <laughs> exactly. He points it out perfectly. Yeah. The coolest part out about this is they actually used when Loki is drunk and he's singing that cool Asgardian song. And, you know, Tom Hiddleston has a great voice, apparently. So he did theater as well. So uh, he's singing uh, Asgardian is really Norwegian. Hmm. So I thought that was a that was a good thing. I, I found that out online, and I was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." I really enjoyed it. It was it sounded good, and they should actually put out an album or something. <laughs> so my number four is just is the whole Lamentus One disaster that we find out about. You know, Loki uses Sylvie's Tim pad to to escape from the TVA with with her and. It takes him to this disaster, and I couldn't figure out why would she program one in that's this bad. Like she had obviously pre-programmed it with a bunch of different, uh, you know, apocalypses, so that she could go escape quickly. But why would she put this one in there? And then because she complains about you sent us to the worst one of all, and I'm like, why did you? I want to go. Why did you put it in there in the first place? So. <laughs> well, I think it might have been pre-programmed in there so she could see all of them. So that yeah. way she must have had a list and then that was in there. But if she were to ever use it, it was to get in yeah, there and to get out to get, exit you know, throw the know, TVA just, off just, her tracks. Right. Because he stole it and then broke it. Yeah. And, but she couldn't do that because he had the temp pad the whole time. Not purposely, but it still broke. Yeah. Well, he didn't purposely break it. <laughs> That's all I got for number four. Just, just that, that disaster that this worst, this, such a horrible disaster was on the tin pad in yeah. for any reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Snowpiercer version, <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, my number three, that sort would of, be, yeah. I did not know that our Loki's power set had the ability to rebuild a building. Now, mind you, he is the god of mischief and illusion. Or since the tin pad is broken... Did Loki, while he was at the TVA, take one of the Infinity Stones? I don't. I don't think that was our Loki that did that. I think that was her. Really? I think that was the female Loki that did that. Yeah, she's because he was all huddled on the ground, and she stood over him and pushed. Was the it building, her or like, was it him? I, think, I thought I'm it was him. Sure it was I just her. watched. It. That's she why I was it. asking. Yeah. So I was thinking it was the Time Stone, but the thing is, uh, thinking that way. If it, it did, it would have reversed time and matter for like a minute or two, and you would have it would have been reset at a certain point. But it would still it would have right, happened. But like I said, I think I I think it was her. I think she was the one that did that. I think it was all she did was she just pushed it back up into. I didn't. I couldn't tell that she actually rebuilt it. I thought she just pushed it away. No, no, it was rebuilt, like as if it never blew up. The only reason why I bring that up is you know because we all know that the Infinity Stones can't work within the TVA, but once they're taken out, no matter what timeline, they could still be used or utilized. So think about it. So if somebody got a hand, hand handhold of those stones, they could do whatever the hell they wanted. But yeah, that that was it. That's okay. all I got for my number three. So my number three is I, again. I just we already talked about it a little bit. Just the interaction between Loki and Sylvie, their back and forth, uh, all the different discussions they had as they 
they work through this this landscape of trying to get to the ark. You know, they they make it to the train and they got to take the train to the ark and the whole thing is going on. But I, I just, the, the one discussion that stood out to me was the, the after they leave the old woman's cabin and Loki is kind of like, why, why would she stay there mm-hmm. in this place that she hates to die? And that's when they go through the whole love, uh, love discussion about, well, maybe love is hate or love is mischief or love is a dagger or love is. And, and by the end of it, she's, she's like, that was a bad metaphor. He's like, Correct. that metaphor yeah. didn't make any sense. You know, I, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, their, their whole, the chemistry they have together is, is really, really good. And you can see that they, they must have bonded really well on set, I think. I think so too. Plus, this leads right into my number two, which you know I caught a lot of flirting and interaction with uh, attraction within the episode between both Loki and Sylvie. So I guess Loki really does love himself in some way, <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> uh, I do sense the idea and thought that maybe there would be a relationship because you know, regardless of them being from two different times they still could do it and maybe that is what cracks the multiverse even more so Mm -hmm. maybe they do fall in love and they try to have this relationship within time who knows so my number two is the the fight. We've already talked a little bit about it, but uh, the train that train scene uh, and the fight mm. with the, with the guards. You know, Loki getting drunk and forgetting about his uniform, and so he makes this great disturbance, and people call the cops or the the, the guards, whoever these guys <laughs> are. And it's the same guy from the beginning when they were getting on the train, so he recognizes them and he realizes uh, what they're doing. But I love <laughs> there's this one moment I didn't notice it until the second watch, but when the guard approaches Sylvie to start fighting with her, she gets this little smile on her face like she knows okay now it's clobber in time uh kind of thing you know and uh, i just love that little smile it was just this little little yeah. head tilt smile kind of thing and just just really well played yeah they yeah. they they really do bring it on too mm-hmm. and clobber in time yeah good preference too that's fantastic for the thing ben Grimm reference <laughs> well last for me would be my number one and that would be the attempt to save the train it was a good attempt but That would alter the timeline and the TVA would be called in on it right away at that point, if you think about it. So this goes right into my number one, because I think you mean saving the the arc, not the train, the the arc, the arc, because this is what bugged me about this whole thing. And you just said it way more succinctly than I had put it in my notes. She she makes it very clear that the arc is destroyed before... It, it leaves the planet. So there's no survivors. We've already talked about that. These disasters, the reason these disasters, they can hide them is because there's no time variance. There's no, you know. And so, like you just said, if they had hijacked the Ark and saved it, that would have changed the timeline. And then the timekeepers would have had to step in. So maybe that was the plan is that they, they would save the Ark. And then when the TVA showed up, they'd be able to defeat them like she's done before when she's defeated the, the, the TVA or just that's mm. what bugged me was that I kept thinking going they have to know their plan's not going to work because the arc is destroyed like like they should have known yeah. that the arc was going to be destroyed before they got to it because in the timeline the arc is destroyed you know what I'm saying like correct yeah and then they would have altered right. that and then the TVA would have been rung in so what would that benefit the, the Loki that we know yeah that we're following and is he working and try to get with Mobius to get him to the timekeepers? Or is he doing that as a ruse to Sylvie? So that way he can make it look like they're trying to help. But both of them really didn't think about that aspect of like, hey, we're altering right. the timeline at that point. Yeah. Maybe it was just them like fearing for their lives. And they were like, oh, well, we could do this to save ourselves. We don't know. <laughs> so uh, let's get into notes. Why don't you go ahead and start? Because I think you we have the same note there for one of ours. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, my first note would be the TVA people are variants. So that answers that Mobius is a variant and does the same thing the others do as well because you know he doesn't use a coaster and Renslayer's office and they have all left rings from their their uh, glasses. So he's yeah. not a robot <laughs> apparently, and he is a regular person, which also leads to the idea and thought too because once they plucked him out i think they plucked him out in the 90s 
at that point. That would explain to work. Right. That would explain the whole jet ski. Uh, thing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was alluding to earlier. Yeah, because yeah. that's what part of my my note on this whole thing is this reveal that that everybody who works for the TVA is a variant is, but they've also kind of wiped their memories somehow. Like she says, she mm-hmm. had to go. You know, she had to find a a memory from C twenty. That was from like hundreds of years before she started fighting with the, the TVA. And that means also, again, we've already talked about the fact that that time kind of runs differently yeah. in the TVA. So so obviously people have much longer lifespans and and all this. But like, like I said, you know, they, they must have some way yeah. of wiping their memory. But it's not a total wipe because there's still like a subconscious there. And I think that's where. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it. The TVA could have been created once the time of the snap, if you think about it, in some respect, because that's when all these, uh, you know, multiverse parts started taking it's effect. Interesting, interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know, I'm starting to channel my uh, Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory's uh, <laughs> string theory concept of things. But the thing is, is that, you know, it could have been done. But with the TVA, with these uh, agents of the TVA, hours could be years or a year. And when they're working, so hundreds of hours or whatever within from the time of the snap could be within that time itself. And the timekeepers are utilizing it to their their own ability. That's an interesting theory. I don't think the snap has anything to do with it, but that's fine. It's just a theory. (laughs) So what's your other one? My next one? Well, it's the only one I have. Both Lokis have different upbringings, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. she said he was a prince, and he had his way, and he has women and men. So, and, you know, she saw him, and he goes, no, I was adopted. Yeah. And that was like, wow, okay, cool. So, you know, he gives her that information, but with her, she was brought up differently. Right, but she was... She said that she was adopted also. She just knew that she already knew that she was adopted. Yeah, she already knew it. And the thing was is that he didn't have to live with that. She did. So she had a little bit of animosity. But his came towards the end, and that's when he went a little bit crazy and rogue. Yeah. But, yeah, they they both have – they're pretty much very similar but different at the same time. Not being two different sexes, but they're very they're very different. So I've just got a few real quick ones. Is uh, it was interesting hearing a song over the Marvel kind of intro logo. I don't know if I've noticed that before, but uh, but that was interesting. Uh, and Endgame one of was Sylvie's... one of them where they did that. Okay, where they did that. Okay, one of Sylvie's horns on over is, is off is like looks like it's broken off from her tiara. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice it in the episode two because her hair was kind of covering it, but it was definitely prominent. You could definitely tell that one of those horns got broken off at some point, whether it was in the initial fight with Loki or it's always been broken off. I don't know. <laughs> and I thought I chuckled both times when, when Loki realized that he had just followed her right back to the TVA. I thought that was great. Uh, and just the the way she fought when she figured out that she couldn't use magic there, the TVA again, props to the stunt, the stunt work and the fight choreography on this, this show was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was great. Those hallway fight scenes are always fun to watch. They are. Uh, so we both got some quotes here. Yeah. I got a few and you got a, a couple, I believe. Yeah. I could start if you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, this comes from Loki saying, brute force is no substitute for diplomacy and guile. And that was before they tried to go inside the woman's home. That was great. And I love her line after that, after he gets shot by the old woman. And she says, which one was that? Diplomacy or? And he's like, don't. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Next one up for me would be, maybe love is hate. And that's when Loki asks about Sylvie's mother. Yeah. My last one is just that when they that moment that we get to hear Miss Minutes voice again over the Tim pad saying, you're out of juice. <laughs> yeah, I miss her. Tara Strong. My last one would be love is an imagine. Oh, yeah. He goes, maybe love is hate. When Loki asks uh, Sylvie's mother and then she goes, love is. Oh, no, no. He states love is an imaginary dagger. And that's Loki's thought of love after their conversation, but he's extremely drunk. <laughs> and she goes, it doesn't make sense. It, it, oh, no, he questions. It doesn't make sense. And Sylvie goes, no. And then Loki's like, damn. And then Sylvie goes, it's a terrible metaphor, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was, those were my quotes. Uh, we had no feedback. 
because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are watching a lot of other things, too, or just yeah. listening to us and having a good time, which we enjoy, because we know you guys are listening. But uh, no audio feedback and no um, comments in Facebook, but we enjoy the fact that you guys are actually listening to us. So with that, we'll move right into comic news or comic movie news. Black Widow will be out on July 9th in theaters as well as Disney Plus for purchase. So if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you could purchase the show or the movie for a rental of like $29.99 or something. But you could also go to the theaters as well and be a patron and contribute to the uh, to the movies like I intend on doing. And I highly recommend it. So that's it for comic news at that point. So we suggest you guys go check out Black Widow when it does come out because we are going to cover it. Well, I have one podcast recommendation, and that was I wrote this a, a week ago because uh, because we took a little because of my <laughs> if you can't hear it in my voice, listeners, I've had been battling a little bit of a chest cold, and so last week uh, it would have been even worse for you to try to hear my voice last week. But mm. um, uh, Wilhelm is a podcast right here on the Next Level Podcast Network, and Mark mm-hmm. got to guest spot on that discussing his yep. favorite John Cusack movies with Ben, and I just loved it. It was a great episode. It was great hearing you on that, and I highly. Uh, Highly, I agree with just about all of your choices. I think some of the ones uh, you reminded me of some movies that I need to go back and revisit <laughs> yeah, that I haven't some. watched in a while. Yeah. So, like Runaway I Jury, I haven't watched Runaway Jury in forever. Oh, same here. And oh, oh my god, that that's such a great movie to watch. It's very serious, very good, but so it, it bends your mind because of what they're doing. And I just enjoyed it. And you know, Rachel Vice, uh, I just. She's beautiful. I just love her. <laughs> but yeah, that's Wilhelm. It's uh, here on the Next Level Podcast, uh, Next Level Online Network. Mm-hmm. And uh, check that out with Ben and all the other. I will be on it sometime. I'm My schedule's been crazy, and I haven't been able to get yeah. it in. So. A, lot of, a lot of listeners will be able to hear, like Jamie's scheduled to be on there, too. You're scheduled. A whole bunch of people that have been on this particular podcast. You'll have familiar voices as well. And we highly recommend Wilhelm on the Next Level network so check that out my recommendation would be did you get my text with pat Oswalt and meredith salinger ah. so now you get a married couple who are celebrities natty gan and that guy from uh, king of queens <laughs> doing and he's also been on so many things he's also been in uh like parks and rec he's made some contributing things he's also been on agents of shield mm-hmm. so this is marvel related as well as Meredith, who is in Punisher. So, but yeah, check out their uh, Did You Get My Text with Pat Oswalt and Meredith Selinger. It, it's pretty much the podcast is just, mind you, they're literally within 40 feet of each other every day. and But they always text each other. So these are basically their texts throughout the day about certain things. And it's very enjoyable, very fun to listen to. I highly recommend you guys check it out because... If you're married, you probably would understand it. Throughout the day, you're going to be texting each other or doing something like that. So I I really enjoyed it. I'm not married, but I really did enjoy the the podcast. So they only have, uh, I think, two or three up right now. So check that out if you can. You can find them on any podcast player of choice. iTunes will definitely have it on there. As well as, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, I think I got them on Stitcher. So it's in my queue and it always shows up. So check them out. Next up would be, well, normally we do YouTube recommendations. But in this case, I'm going to do other recommendations. So I highly recommend B5 Events. And that would be uh, for Patricia Tallman. And Patricia Tallman, who I interviewed on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast has her own online event with celebrities and it was very helpful for fans throughout the pandemic. And they had a yoga and meditation classes with certain celebrities. They had a poetry reading too with one of the celebrities as well. Uh, I was at the last event, which was last weekend and we're, we're recording this on, uh, was it Saturday the 26th? But last Saturday, I was on 
and Tom Savini was the person that she was uh, interviewing and having on. So I was able to get in touch with Patty and I got on that and I was there for the VIP room and the before show opening room too as well. There is payment involved, kind of like a convention, but it's very fun to go to. So I would suggest that all you have to do is go to B5, the letter B, and the number 5, events.com, and you can check it out there. Patty also has a Patreon for P5 events, so if you love Star Trek and Babylon 5, that is a place I highly recommend because uh, Patty was in Star Trek and she was in uh, Babylon 5 as an actor. And she, you know, she gets all her friends involved. In this case, uh, we talked a little bit about the 40th anniversary of Knight Riders within the VIP room. If you actually get to see that video, <laughs> Tom actually, and both Patty and Tom recommended that I get for Adrenaline Cinema because I still have to cover it and I still have to find somebody to really cover the movie with me on it. But I wanted to do a round table and Tom is definitely in for it. Patty's definitely in for it. Donald Rubenstein, who is an actor, as well as the uh, the person that did the music for the movie Night Riders, as well as uh, one of the other actresses that were there in the movie. She was uh, a knight, actually, and uh, another character actor that was on there as well. So I might have a Knight Riders Night of the Round table discussion about Night Riders. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm trying to put things into effect. It's kind of hard now because life just opened up. We're all busy. So I'm trying to work that in so that way we could have at least a good hour and a half conversation, maybe two hours, and then have uh, the Sultan of Splatter himself on. Patricia, who is a, a great actress or actor, I don't really know how to go about saying it anymore, <laughs> but she's uh, she's amazing, and I uh, love what she's been doing with B5 events, or as well as Quest Retreats, which is her own thing for getting fandoms together to go on retreats together and have a good time. So you could always find that out on B5 events, and like I said, that's b5events.com. So check that out, and if you subscribe or whatever, you should be able to get the video feed or the previous videos that were out there. I'm on there. I think I'm on there twice. <laughs> so, but if you become a Patreon, you're, you're privy to all the uh, video files that are at hand. Nice. So check them out. Yeah, I, I like to support and promote whatever my friends are doing, and I consider Patty a good friend because she really wants to be on a drill on cinema again. <laughs> Yeah, and if you don't re remember who she is, if you are a fan of the remake of Night of the Living Dead from the 90s, she was the uh, barber character in that particular movie, and she was Laura Dern's stunt double in the original Jurassic Park. So that shows you how tough Patty is. Right. <laughs> so check that out. Well, good. Well, hopefully you, you are hearing us on your podcast player of choice, but we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or again, whatever player of choice you use. If there's a way to give us a review on there, we would love to have a five-star review or a thumbs up or whatever. You can also find us at our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. We have the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have an email address. You can send us an email, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at the end at gmail.com. We have a YouTube channel. That YouTube channel is panels to pixels podcast. So go on there, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and uh, we'd really love to hear from you for next week as we continue on with the next episode of Loki. Yes. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, family adventure films, and suspense and thriller films. So we love to cover that. Uh, Goonies has dropped, and it's dropped not only on all players of choice or podcast player of choices, but also the first time on YouTube. So check it out. So if you're a YouTube subscriber and that's how you listen to your podcast, we are on YouTube now. That is the only podcast right now. But coming this week, when once you hear this particular episode, 
Obviously, you'll be hearing Paik and myself cover Baby Driver, and you'll hear a nice voicemail coverage from Steve Brown himself. So check that out when you can. And for me, you can hear me right here, of course, on Panels to Pixels when I'm not having a scratchy voice and taking a week off. Uh, <laughs> and I send voicemails to other various podcasts that our friends do. Exactly. And uh, I actually have to add yours to the next podcast because you sent in something for nobody. So I'm going to add oh, that nice. as uh, an add-on because uh, Goonies got like two. <laughs> nice. Nice. I haven't listened yet, so I've got so to queue it up. Do. Yeah. I enjoyed that. So pretty much that's our show, everybody. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.